Welcome back to another episode of Space This Week. And guys, this is going to be a great one. Last week we had the launch of the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer mission, one of the most important launches of the decade. And of course, we are imminently awaiting the maiden flight of Starship, happening today as of the time of me recording this video. We also have a Falcon 9 mission to discuss, two aborted rocket launches, space station news, Artemis updates, X-59 news, and much, much more. So let's start off with the big one. Starship is now go for launch. Yes, can you believe it has been nearly two whole years since the last time we saw a flight from Starbase with the test flight of SN15. SpaceX haven't exactly been idle during all of this time, as I'm sure you're all well aware. It is crazy how much the landscape at Starbase has changed in all of this time, with the rollout of the first ever Super Heavies, and of course the construction and completion of the absolutely massive Stage Zero. And now things are finally ready for flight. The last remaining thing for SpaceX to launch Ship 24 and Booster 7 was getting a launch license from the Federal Aviation Authority. And, well, at the end of last week, that's exactly what SpaceX obtained. There are now no more barriers to cross, nothing left to repair, no bureaucracy left to navigate. This is it. Official SpaceX live streams and website are currently putting the launch at today, the 17th of April. I've left a link to the official SpaceX stream in this video's description. In terms of the flight, a full launch timeline can be found on SpaceX's website, but to summarize it here, approximately two hours before the launch, the SpaceX flight director will conduct a poll to verify that everything is ready for propellant loading. At T-1 hour 39, the booster liquid oxygen load will begin, as well as the booster fuel load for liquid methane. At T-1 hour 22, the ship fuel load for liquid methane begins, followed by the ship liquid oxygen load at T-1 hour 17. At T-16 minutes 40 seconds, the Raptor engines begin to chill on the booster, and at T-40 seconds, fluid interfaces begin their vent down sequence. At T-8 seconds, the Raptor startup sequence begins, and finally, at T-0, the launch occurs with guaranteed excitement. A lot of people in my comment sections have been talking about how they're really excited to see the first catch attempt of a Super Heavy with this launch, and I just want to quickly remind everyone that this won't be happening for this launch. The booster is expected to make a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, and it won't survive the flight. The same can sadly be said about Ship 24. I and many others believed that SpaceX would be attempting a flip to vertical soft landing in the ocean, like we saw with all of the SN8 to 15 high altitude flights tests, of course those landing on concrete, but this will not be the case. SpaceX will simply allow the ship to belly flop straight into the ocean, presumably obliterating the ship on impact. I found this to be a little bit surprising myself. I would have thought that it would at least serve some benefit to attempt a landing burn, but maybe there is more at play than what is publicly known. After all, Ship 26 is next in line for flight, and that has no control surfaces at all. So perhaps SpaceX aren't really focusing on ship reusability as a priority for now. We should get some good views of the launch from SpaceX. Lab Padre captured them installing a portable camera rig with a rather prominent Starlink dish at Boca Chica Beach, giving us some close-up views of the launch when it happens. We also saw some final pre-launch activities happening at the launch site last week. Teams tested the Orbital Launch Mount's FireX suppression system, which will help extinguish any fires, as well as provide a minimal amount of sound and shock absorption for when those 33 engines fire up. Now, take a look at this picture by Starbase Surfer. There's the booster there, but if you look really closely zooming in here, you can see my new plushie. That's right, Laon Aerospace finally have our very own line of plushies. We teamed up with Makeship to bring you the bean. Rocket, with an astronaut that is absolutely not Sauce. and won't watch you while you sleep, I'm told. Oh my god, where did he go? Ah! That's right, you can remove the astronaut from the rocket after landing thanks to our advanced adhesion technology. Exploring brave new worlds like stones, bins, nature. It's on sale right now for a mere $29.99 US dollars. And if you're a silver level Patreon member, you get a 10% discount. Go and buy using the link in the description or pinned comment, but be warned, it's only going to be available for 21 days, starting right now, so this is a super exclusive opportunity to seize. 
But it's not just the exquisite embroidery, the smooth curves, the velvet yet aerodynamic finish that should convince you to pre-order. We need to assemble a space army. The Kraken has sold over 235 units as of the time of me speaking. This is not a drill. We need to sell even more to squash the Kraken and keep the solar bear safe. And because the brave astronaut is flying a freaking rocket, he could travel anywhere in the world, which means worldwide shipping to all who choose to pick one up. Act now while you still can. And when the plushies start shipping and litter breaking into your homes, I'll be running a competition on my Discord server where you can post a photo of your rocket and astronaut landed somewhere, and whoever sends their astronaut to the coolest destination will win a free copy of Kerbal's Space Program 2. So what are you waiting for? Click that link below. Last week we also saw crews working on the ship quick disconnect arm, and then we also saw the destacking of Ship 24. A lot of people were alarmed by this, but this was something that we were all expecting. The flight determination system, aka the self-destruct system for Ship 24, needed to be armed. The reason that it wasn't armed sooner is because it absolutely shouldn't be while workers are in close proximity to the rocket and the launch pad, but now that the launch is authorised, this system can now be armed. Over at the build site, work continues on future vehicles. Booster 11 was the subject of most of the activities last week. We saw its fuel down comer inserted into its liquid oxygen tank, and the vehicle's autogenous pressurization line was lifted vertical into the mega bay for installation. Now, with all eyes on Starship last week, it was easy to overlook another SpaceX launch, the Transporter 7 mission. SpaceX Transporter missions, also known as SmallSat rideshare missions, are commercial rideshare missions offered by SpaceX to deliver small satellites into space. These missions allow customers to share the cost of launching a satellite into orbit, making space access much more affordable for small businesses, academic institutions, and government agencies. As the name implies, the Transport 7 mission was the seventh rideshare mission by SpaceX, and it was initially supposed to launch from the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California on the 14th of April. Unfortunately, SpaceX had to abort the launch due to unfavorable weather conditions, and so a reattempt was made the next day, and this time everything went well. After second stage separation, Falcon 9's first stage made a successful landing on landing zone 4 at the Vandenberg Space Force Base. This particular Falcon 9 first stage, B-1063, has already been used nine times before on other missions, the Sentinel-6 mission, DART, and seven Starlink missions. What was really cool about the Transporter 7 mission is that this time SpaceX used a a shorter second stage MVAC nozzle, which is new for Falcon 9. SpaceX didn't need quite as much power to get the payload where it needed to go, so they could afford to make the second stage a little bit shorter. Falcon 9 Transporter 7 was sadly not the only mission to see an aborted launch. We also saw an Ariane 5 abort launch on the 13th of April due to unfavourable weather conditions again. A re-attempt was made the very next day, and this time the massive rocket blasted off the French Guiana launch pad without issue. On board was one of the year's most exciting missions, the European Space Agency's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, also known as JUICE, which is a satellite set to explore the Jupiter system. This is one of the most exciting and ambitious missions that the ESA has ever undertaken. Jupiter, our solar system's largest planet, has lots of moons, and many of these moons are icy, and some are thought to have subsurface oceans that could potentially support life. JUICE will focus on studying three of the icy moons, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. These moons are thought to be some of the most promising places in our solar system to look for signs of life, and JUICE will be the first mission to study them in detail. One of the key goals of the mission is to study the moons' subsurface oceans, and JUICE will use a suite of instruments to study the moons' icy shells, and will look for signs of activities such as geysers and plumes. It'll also study the moon's magnetic fields, which could provide clues about the nature of their oceans. In addition to studying the moons, JUICE will also conduct a detailed study of Jupiter itself, looking at its atmosphere and measuring its magnetic field, and it'll study the planet's auroras as well. When studying Jupiter's atmosphere, JUICE will look for signs of water and other chemicals that could provide clues about the planet's history and composition. One of the most exciting aspects of the JUICE mission is the fact that it'll be the first mission to study Ganymede in detail. Ganymede is the largest moon in our solar system, and it's thought to have a subsurface ocean that could potentially harbour life. In order to conduct its detailed survey of the moon, the spacecraft will enter orbit around Ganymede, becoming the first ever spacecraft to orbit a moon other than the moon of Earth. Unfortunately, all of this is not going to be happening very soon. Jupiter is a long way away, and so it's going to take a long time to get there. 
the spacecraft will conduct four gravity assists over the course of eight years before finally arriving at Jupiter in July 2031. But I'm sure that that time will fly by, pun intended. <laughs> Some of you, and I, look back at my EVE submarine as being only uploaded yesterday. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Here's a weird looking sight, a Falcon Heavy with no landing legs. Yep, this is the upcoming Falcon Heavy 006 mission, and the payload is so beefy that all three Falcon cores will need to be expended. No landings of any kind will be attempted. Which is a bit sad, but what's really cool is that despite the cores being expended, Falcon Heavy still comes in extremely cheap compared to its competitors. Shortly after these photos were taken, on Wednesday, Falcon Heavy was rolled to Launch Complex 39A for static fire testing. NASA has been making progress on their experimental X-59 aircraft for the Quest mission by installing its tail assembly. This aircraft is unique because it'll produce a quiet sonic thump instead of a loud sonic boom when flying at supersonic speeds. I am definitely looking forward to seeing this thing fly. In Artemis news now, at the Kennedy Space Center, teams have successfully tested one of the four solar array wings for the Orion spacecraft that will be used in the Artemis 2 mission, where astronauts will travel around the moon and back to Earth. NASA also released a new time-lapse video of teams successfully assembling all five major parts of the SLS rocket's core stage for Artemis 2, which was originally filmed back in March. Here, you can see them joining the engine section to the rest of the rocket stage. Next, they need to integrate the four RS-25 engines to the engine section to complete the stage. The engine section is a complex part of the rocket stage that powers the Artemis missions to the moon, and it includes vital systems for mounting, controlling, and delivering fuel to the engines. On the International Space Station, on the 14th of April, the SpaceX Dragon CRS-27 cargo spacecraft successfully undocked from the forward-facing docking port of the International Space Station's Harmony module. The spacecraft, which had previously supported the CRS-22 and CRS-24 missions, autonomously departed the station, carrying a significant amount of return cargo, weighing in at just shy of two metric tons, which included completed research and station hardware. The departure of the CRS-27 Dragon spacecraft marks the successful completion of another mission for SpaceX and NASA, demonstrating the importance of continued collaboration between private and public entities in advancing space exploration and research. The return of the completed research and station hardware provides valuable data and insights for the scientists and engineers back on Earth who are working to advance our understanding of space and develop new technologies for use in space and on Earth. On the 16th of April, China launched the Fengyang 3G satellite from the Qiquan Satellite Launch Center in Gansu Province using a Long March 4B launch vehicle. The satellite is designed to help with weather forecasting, disaster prevention and mitigation, climate change response and ecological conservation. Laon Aerospace had another busy one last week. We visited the ancient alien statues on Minmus in Wednesday's livestream, and in Saturday's video I built my first ever space station in Kerbal Space Program 2 click through to my channel if you want to check out either of those, but I would now like to give a massive thanks to all the people currently being listed on screen. They are my generous Patreon donors and channel members, and it's their support that makes all of this content possible. If you want to see your name listed there, then you can join either program using the links below, and hey, you get early ad-free access to space this week! Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching, here's hoping we get an awesome Starship launch, and I'll see you all in the next one. And don't forget to buy the plush.